priests, sisters, salt laity, dear friends of Father John, and even those hopefully joining us via Facebook Live, especially we hope the people of Enke, where Father John poured out his life for 30 years. We are gathered here as a community of faith to give thanks to God for the gift of Father John's life and to pray for the repose of his soul to eternal paradise. We'd like at the onset to acknowledge that there are many, many of our priests and deacons whom I seriously considered asking to give today's homily. Deacon Cal, Father Dan, Father Mark, Father James, Father Dale, Father Vince, Father Scott, Father Derek, Father Glenn. <laughs> the list goes on and on, and that was precisely the problem. There were so many people so close and so that Father John was so instrumental and their vocations that it became impossible to choose. Nonetheless, know that I would have liked to have asked you. Not to mention, thank goodness, that sisters and lay people are not allowed to give homilies. <laughs> <laughs> at least that made it a bit easier. Father John was really so close and so instrumental to so many people. As Father John used to say, Every homily should have a reference to our Blessed Mother Mary, so in honor of him and his relationship with our Blessed Mother, let us begin with the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the order of Preachers known as the Dominicans, the charism of the community is to share with others the truth about God whom they contemplate. While the charism of the Dominican community originated from the founder, St. Dominic, the highest realization of the charism was surely achieved by St. Thomas Aquinas. No one was more effective at communicating the truth about God whom he contemplated than St. Thomas. Similarly, in my opinion, I would argue that while the charism of salt originated and was gifted through Father James Flanagan, the highest realization of living our charism was really something that Father John McHugh achieved. Now, I would like to clarify that I did not directly compare Father John to St. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> Father John didn't write a Summa Theologiae. His was an effective, practical wisdom which he shared. Remember one particular Sunday in Benke after a couple of teachers had the misfortune of jumping in probably the fastest pickup truck in Belize. He was barreling along at over 85 miles per hour on the road between Sakuts and Cayo. The teachers thought for sure they were going to die. When they came back, they told Father John all about the experience. Well, at all of the Sunday Masses, Father John told the people, he said, I always tell you that your angel guardian travels with you and he's there to protect you. But when you're driving in your car and you start going over 65 miles per hour, your angel guardian steps out of the car and you are on your own. <laughs> Back to Father John is the realization of our community's charism. He provided for us, I believe, an inspired model for how to live our charism, which is Marian Trinitarian, family teams, and missionary. And so I would like to look at each of those dimensions and relate them to the life of Father John. In the first place, Father John was a man of deep, abiding faith in the Holy Trinity and a man completely devoted and trusting in the intercessory power of our Blessed Mother Mary. Like many great people, Father John's faith and character was formed by the love of his parents and sister, and tested, forged, and purified in a crucible of trials and sufferings, which rather than crush him, formed the basis of an unshakable foundation of trust in the love of our Heavenly Father. As many of us know well, while in training for World War II, Father John's aircraft crashed, killing all of the 12-man crew except three. Father John was one of the three. Without a crew or plane to go to the war, 
Father John began assisting with the training of other crews. Upon hearing that a man with a wife and children who occupied the exact same position on the aircraft as Father John had was about to be sent off to war, Father John offered and succeeded in taking the man's place. He flew 18 missions before his plane was shot down in 1945, and once again he was one of the only three to survive. Yesterday on the drive up here, Father Mark was sharing the story of Father John falling from the sky with his parachute open, and Father John telling the story that the speed that you were traveling at was still great enough that it was very common to break bones. But as Providence would have it, as Father John neared the ground, he came across a patch of young pine trees. He said he wound up with the top of a pine tree straddled between his legs. The tree gently bent over, and in Father John's words, I just kind of stepped off. <laughs> it seemed even the trees would bend before Father John. <laughs> Father John was taken a prisoner of war until being liberated as the war came to a close. Believing himself spared by God for a purpose, and citing the graces he received from attending daily Mass during the war, Father John providentially learned well the message that we hear from today's second reading. No one lives for himself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. His life was spared, and Father John was ready to live completely for the Lord. Father Tony Blunt was sharing the other day how Father John conceded that Father Flanagan beat him at pretty much every competition. They, of course, were both avid and fine sportsmen. As Father John searched and searched for something that he may have beaten Father Jim at, he finally asked Father Jim, Hey Jim, when did you make your total consecration to Our Lady? Father Flanagan replied, 1948. At that, Father John celebrated, stating, I made mine in 1947. <laughs> <laughs> Offering his life to Jesus through Mary certainly did not spare Father John from more suffering. In 1952, his brother-in-law and nephew were killed in a car accident returning from his ordination. His other two nephews would also eventually be killed in separate car accidents. Through the tragedies and trials, Father John continued to offer his life to Jesus through Mary. His faith and devotion enabled him to truly pray with conviction our psalm from today. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Father John was a model of how true devotion to Mary leads one to Jesus and to a deep and abiding faith and trust in the Most Holy Trinity. I think it was Father John's faith in the Trinity and trust in Our Lady's intercession, combined with a wonderful disposition and joyful personality that made him such a blessing to be around. Which brings us to the second dimension of our assault charism, serving on ecclesial family teams. Who on earth in this church would not want to be on a family team with Father John McHugh? Or to have Father John as their pastor? If we were back in elementary school and you were the captain of a team getting to choose first, I guarantee you that Father John would be the first guy to go every single time. Father John was an amazingly receptive and positive person. He never imposed or exerted himself on anyone but was always content to be in the presence of other people. When I think of the qualities that made Father John such an appealing person to be around, I of course think of his infectious joy, but I also think of the amazing level of freedom that he possessed. He was an amazingly free person. He was the same joyful, open, and receptive guy around everyone. For some of us, our freedom to be who God calls us to be is impeded by our sins, by our past, by insecurity, by suffering, by fear, by our moods, by the behavior of others toward us that causes us to react negatively, by doubt, by regret, by self-pity, etc., etc. 
It's not easy to be completely free. For a variety of reasons, we are sometimes blocked from being everything we should be. I think Father John was the freest person I ever met. He was the same wonderful guy to absolutely everyone. There is a popular definition of holiness that I have heard many times in recent years, which goes, holiness is becoming the best version of yourself. That best version, of course, is becoming the person God has called you to be. Without intending to canonize Father John, it seems to me that he was pretty close to the best version of himself for a long, long time. I think that is why he was so happy and joyful and such a joy to be around. Joy, happiness, holiness are all very attractive to be around. The other day I heard the story of how Father John, at about the age of 80 or so, was visiting the Salt Mission in Capulene, which of course is a relatively remote place only a few miles up the road from here. At the conclusion of the visit to the Salt Parish, Father John convinced Father Tony Blunt and Father Scott Brothen that they could merely drop him off at the bus station in Lahara and he would take the bus back to Albuquerque. You can scold Father Scott and Father Tony later for <laughs> leaving an 80-year-old man at the side of the road to grab a bus. <laughs> but almost immediately, two guys in a pickup see Father John and offer him a ride. They ask where he's going, and he tells them that he would like to get to Albuquerque so he can eventually return to Robstown in South Texas. They start driving and the two guys enjoyed Father John's company so much that allegedly, say allegedly because I have a hard time believing it, they drove him 15 hours all the way to Robstown. <laughs> Today's Gospel of the Beatitudes provides with us the description of the path that leads to holiness, happiness, and authentic freedom to live as a child of God. When you meet people who are humble, meek, mourning over others, just, merciful, pure, peacemakers, and willing to suffer for Christ, it is truly an encounter with Jesus himself, and there is nothing in this world more attractive than that. The third feature of our charism is that we are missionary, serving in areas of deepest need, where it can sometimes be difficult for the church to find servants ready to assist. Father John fulfilled this perfectly as well. Called to serve in a place, Benque Viejo, where the previous parish priest had been murdered, he willingly went and what was supposed to be a one-year term became a 30-year assignment. A 30-year labor of love between Father John and the people of Benque Viejo del Carmen, Melchor, and the surrounding areas. Traveling by horse, car, boat, or foot, it seemed that no person in the Cayo district of Belize or the Paten region of Guatemala was beyond the reach of Father John. When Father Tony arrived in Benque in 1996, he tells the story of how he thought to himself, finally, he will be able to give Father John some relief and assistance in covering and serving the 30 or so mission stations that belong to the parish. As he walked in the rectory, Father John sat Father Tony down and told him, I'm glad you're here. Now we can open up some more missions. <laughs> Sister Megan told me the other day that Father John's record for celebrating masses in a day was 13. I realize that exceeds the canonical limit of three. <laughs> but you couldn't contain Father John's missionary zeal and his love and desire to help people. If there is a word to describe Father John's missionary work, I think the word would be fruitful. How many people came into the family of God and experienced the warmth, mercy, and tenderness of God on account of the ministry of Father John? How many people encountered Jesus Christ through the ministry of Father John? 
And how many people, including many of our own salt priests, sisters, and laity here today, were inspired to respond affirmatively to God's calling to a vocation to the priesthood or religious life or to salt, at least in part through the witness and example of Father John. He showed what was possible, what being a priest or religious could be like when lived to its fullest. Marian Trinitarian, ecclesial family team, and missionary, Father John was an A++ in all areas. He was exemplary in going to Jesus through Mary in order to live entirely for the triune God. He showed us how to relate to one another on a team, how joy and holiness are attractive, and how to be a friend, brother, and father in a religious family. And he demonstrated the zeal and love for God's people that can make a missionary's life so incredibly fruitful. And yet, while Father John is the highest realization of living our salt charism, I think he showed us something even greater. He showed us what it means to belong to a religious family. You live a charism, but you belong to people. Father John lived the salt charism, and of course, in a sense, he belonged to everyone. But in a special way, He belonged to us in the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. What an amazing thing that we can say we belong to the same community as Father John McHugh. You can never replace a Father John or a Father Jim. You can never not feel the weight of the loss but we can take the memory of our beloved co-founders and all the good they stood for and cherish it in our hearts and honor their memory by manifesting those same qualities in our lives. God willing, with the help of their intercession, let us take on the responsibility to live our vocations to their fullest and to become the best possible community we can become. Today, as we bid farewell to our beloved Father John, we pray that the words at the conclusion of today's first reading, that seem to so fittingly pertain to the earthly life of Father John, would also pertain to his eternal life. Behold his God, to whom he looked to save him. This is the Lord for whom he looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved him. Rest in peace, Father John.